Welcome to our lecture in line and now we're going to show you a little bit more about where the thin lens equation came from. We're not going to derive it yet, that's for a later video, but at least we want to show you the relationship between the lens maker's equation and the thin lens equation. So this is the equation that we've seen in the previous videos where we have 1 over the focal length of the lens is equal to the index of refraction of the lens divided by the index of refraction of the medium that the lens is in, minus 1, times 1 over the radius of the front side of the lens minus 1 over the radius of the back side of the lens. Remember the convention on the radii that if it's bent to the left the radius is positive and if it's bent to the right the radius is negative. And so in this case you could see that uh, um, if the lens looks like this this would be a positive curvature on the front side and a negative curvature on the back side but that would make it a converging lens. Now let's take a look at the picture on the right here and notice here's our thin lens and again this is for thin lenses so later on we'll look at thicker lenses where we actually have to take into account that there's a certain thickness to the lens we're ignoring that now and so a lens will have a focal point in front and behind the lens of course it will be equal distance on both sides and the distance from the center of the lens to the focal point is called the focal length indicated by the small letter F the capital letter F indicates the focal points let's say we place an object in front of the lens so to the left typically is the front on the other side typically is the back the person observing the image will be on the back side of the lens so here's the observer and there's the front side the observer will be on the back side of the lens notice that the object is at the object distance away from the lens we call that s so s is named the object distance and then I call S prime the image distance, the distance from the lens to where the image is formed. And in some other videos I have shown previously how we can find out where that image position is, where the position of the image is, the distance of the image is, by following certain criteria and certain equations. We're not going to go through that right now, but you can see that you can simply follow a ray diagram that will indicate where the image will occur. Now, assuming that n sub m is the index of refraction of the medium, we can come up with an equation, we'll describe later how that equation is derived, that the index of refraction of the medium divided by the object distance plus the index of refraction medium divided by the image distance is equal to this. And notice that this is actually the same as what we have over there. Almost the same, but we'll show you in just a moment where it's slightly different. Now, if we divide both sides of this equation by n sub m, so we're going to multiply the left side by 1 over n sub m and we're going to multiply the right side of the equation by 1 over n sub m. What we'll get now is we get 1 over the object distance plus 1 over the image distance is equal to n sub l minus n sub m divided by n sub m times 1 over r1 minus 1 over r2. If I put that in parentheses, it looks a little bit better that way. Now let's go ahead and divide n sub m into the numerator. And so we get 1 over s plus 1 over s prime is equal to n sub l divided by n sub m minus 1 times 1 over r1 minus 1 over r2. Now you can see the similarity to what we have up there. This looks exactly like what we have over here, which means that this must equal to this. But in other words, 1 over the focal length of a thin lens is equal to 1 over the object distance plus 1 over the image distance. And this is another form of the thin lens equation that you're probably familiar with if you had a little bit of optics before. So this is where this equation came from. Later on, like I said, I will show you how this equation is actually derived by actually going through a very detailed ray diagram to come up with that equation. Now one more thing is we can actually solve this for f algebraically in a slightly different way. We can take the inverse of that. We can say that uh, f is equal to 1 over 1 over s plus 1 over s prime. So what I've done here to this equation, I've simply taken the inverse of both sides of the equation. Inverse of 1 over f is f. Inverse of this is what we have on the board. Now in the denominator, we're going to find the common denominator by multiplying those two together. So we can say that f is equal to 1 divided by s prime over s s prime plus s over s s prime. So I simply found the common denominator, which is the product of the two denominators, and I'm putting in the numerator what I have missing. Again, when I 
when I simplify by dividing both sides by s prime and here divide by both sides by s, I get the original equation again. But notice I can now write that over a common denominator. This is 1 over s prime plus s divided by s s prime. And then if I, if I then, since I have 1 divided by a, a fraction, I can of course uh, change that to 1 times the inverse of that fraction. So now we can write that f is equal to s s prime divided by s plus s prime. I reverse s and s prime. And so here's another form of the thin lens equation. So these are the equations that come in very handy when you work with thin lenses. They all came from the lens maker's equation, which we started with at the beginning of this lecture series. And notice that, that this had a similarity from this. Again, uh, the der derivation of this equation will come in a later video. At least now you've been introduced to that. And what we're going to do first is show you how to use this equation for double or multiple lens systems. And then we'll show you how to find the focal length of a multiple lens system using these equations. So that is in the, in the making for the next several videos.